Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Rakhi, and I'm in the second year of my PhD. Um, my PhD is in developmental biology, and uh, I'm uh, basically um, working on uh, chicken uh, macrophages, understanding the mechanism of immune response in chickens. Um, so, uh, well, uh, why chickens? Because we all know they have a, a global uh, economic importance. We know a lot of a uh, lot about them uh, uh, in mammals. The we know a lot of the immune response in mammals uh, compared to uh, compared to them in chickens. Very less is known as there are uh, um, as there are uh, as uh, less reagents are available to study the immunology. Um, so the title for today's talk is uh, gene targeting in chicken primordial germ cells using CRISPRs. Um, so, basically, to give a little bit of background, um, so the main uh, the main cells which are involved in the immune response uh, is the mononuclear phagocyte system. Now, what this system uh, comprises of is a family of cells which consists of progenitors, uh, monocytes, uh, tissue macrophages, dendritic cells, and osteoclasts. Um, uh, basically, um, these are all sorry. <laughs> these cells are controlled by the interaction between three molecules. That is uh, CSF1, that is colony stimulating factor one, uh, IL34. Um, this is uh, uh, these two are cytokines, um, which binds to the uh, the receptor that is colony stimulating factor uh, one uh, receptor which is a type 3 uh, tyrosine protein kinase receptor. And uh, this interaction brings about the differentiation, uh, the proliferation, and survival of all the, these uh, cells. Now, uh, any abnormality into these cells brings about, uh, um, like, uh, there is uh, chronic inflammation, then there is um, what we say, the, basically these cells are responsible to maintain homeostasis and development uh, into an organism. So we see that these three uh, molecules are very, very critical in uh, uh, the survival of the whole uh, procedure of the immune response. So uh, basically what happens are the uh, two cytokines, that is IL-34 and uh, CSF1, uh, they bind to the different regions of the uh, of the receptor, so this is the structure of a CSF1 R receptor, which consists of the extracellular domain, the transmembrane domain region, and the intracellular domain. So, uh, I'll, uh, today's talk, uh, I'll basically cover um, CSF about colony stimulating factor one. Um, CSF1 binds basically to the domains two and three of the receptor, which brings about the dim dimerization of the receptors at domains uh, four and five. Which, uh, which brings about a phosphorylation of the tyrosine residues, which is present into the intracellular membrane. And this signaling uh, mechanism uh, brings about the differentiation of these cells. Uh, this is also uh, involved into the proliferation, and the same signaling mechanism is involved in the survival of these cells. So, now, um, previously in our lab, uh, uh, a lot of work has been done in exploring this system where um, we have observed that the CSF1R system is conserved in birds uh, as it is conserved in other mammals. So uh, we have developed a, a chicken transgenic line where there is, a, a, where there is a enhanced expression of a, a fluorescent reporter that is CSF1RM apple. Um, which uh, brings about, um, uh, which can uh, detect uh, the presence of the CSF1R expressing cells, which are basically macrophages. And, uh, and subsequently, we can study the, or trace uh, the uh, functions of the macrophages in those regions. So uh, there's, a, uh, there's a ubiquitous promoter transgene, uh, which is expressed in the cells uh, of, uh, these uh, cells which are expressing CSF1R. 
Um, and we, uh, we have also uh, developed uh, and purified the anti-CSF1 and anti-CSF1 are antibodies to study uh, to study the whole uh, system. Um, and we have the purified protein of CSF1 and IL-34. So basically, I'm going to utilize these tools into my PhD project in studying the immune re uh, response in chickens. Um, so uh, in, um, uh, in mouse, it has been uh, detected that uh, any mutation in these two locus, CSF1 uh, and CSF1R, uh, is responsible for the growth uh, abnormality. There's a severe uh, growth abnormality, there's a, a loss of bone formation, um, there is uh, difficulties in, repro uh, rep rep in the development of reproductive organs, um, then there's difficulty in the development of mammary glands, uh, and se uh, several other uh, defects. So uh, this is what has been known in mice, but we want to know whether uh, the same biology of CSF1R is also observed in chickens. So the aim, uh, uh, aim, to, uh, aim in this project is to delete uh, the locus of CSF1R using CRISPRs in chicken primordial germ cell line. Now a little bit about the chicken primordial germ cells. Uh, these are uh, basically um, the cells which carries the genetic information from uh, one generation to another. Uh, these are also called as germ cells. And uh, they originate from the epiblast region of the developing embryo of the chicken, um, which enters blood circulation and uh, are migrated into the whole region of the embryo. After which, uh, after uh, some days at, like, at stage 28 of Hamil Hamilton and Hamburger, uh, they decide into a uh, germinal ridge area where they differentiate into a uh, sperm or an egg, to uh, uh, sperm or an egg and continue the lineage. Um, so what uh, uh, it is, what it has been studied is that these primordial germ cells can be cultivated in vitro and uh, using a defined uh, media um, without uh, losing the potential to develop into a germ cell lineage. So, uh, so at uh, say day, uh, day uh, three of the uh, developing embryo, these uh, primordial germ cells, say one microliter is, um, is removed from the circulating blood. It is grown in vitro into a, ce into a, a cell culture media, uh, which is defined by Mike McGrew from our lab, and uh, it is, uh, which uh, very much proliferates uh, the population of these cells. Um, and uh, these, after uh, growing them for like four weeks, these cells are cryopreserved using a routine technique. Um, and basically, uh, this is another set of experiment which was done earlier. Uh, if we revive these uh, cryopreserved cells, um, uh, so what uh, actually uh, it has been done, like uh, this cells uh, was marked with green fluorescent protein using transposons. and. Uh, uh, after uh, cultivating them uh, for like another four weeks or so, uh, uh, they are um, they are inserted or injected into um, host female recipient uh, into uh, em into the embryo of uh, I think it's stage ten to twelve uh, of the uh, recipient host, and uh, then. Uh, uh, these, oh sorry, so these are bred uh, and uh, to another host, a male host, and then um, we obtain uh, green fluorescent protein uh, cells marked offspring, of which we observe like 80% uh, of them were viable. Um, so what happens is when these cells are injected into the host um, recipient, the, there's a competition between the survival of the uh, injected uh, cells and the host own, own germ cells. So, um, but we, but the experiment was successful, and it uh, it was um, 
and it was like we came to observe that uh, whatever the genotype was we have in the of the cells into the uh, cell culture dish of the cells um, it was uh, like the same genotype was observed into the offspring as well so um, basically i'm going to explore i'm going to use this system um, now uh, when the these primordial germ cells are into the culture media it they become an easy target for modification um, so we can target uh, using crispr's uh, and other techniques our lab is uh, currently developing so uh, we can uh, edit different regions and study the uh, molecular biology of those genes so in my case i'm uh, i'm editing the um, gene csf1r receptor and so this is what i have done so far so basically uh, i have designed uh, since a lot of background has been uh, known uh, in the previous talks about crispr i'm uh, actually focusing on the work that i have performed so um, so i have designed guide rnas uh, targeting the transmembrane domain of the receptor um i have performed co transfection with guides 3 and 4 um uh after the uh, after lipofactamin transfection and uh, selecting the cells in pure uh, uh, uh after and selecting the cells against pure mycin resistance um and then isolating the genomic dna from these cells after 4 weeks of uh, growing and expanding of uh, expansion of these cells um i designed uh, primers which are uh, which amplifies this 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 region basically and uh, performed a normal pcr and observed that uh, into the targeted uh, targeted uh, cells i obtained a deletion which was uh, actually a small but a small region of 77 base pairs and it was seen Uh, from the gel uh, because of the difference in the size from the wild type uh, genomic region pcr amplified uh, dna and the targeted one so um, like that was very good hope that i obtained so i was happy with it but i wasn't sure whether this deletion was confirmed uh, until and unless i sequence it so um, so the next step was to uh seek, since it is it was a mixture of population of different uh, clones uh i uh, i sequenced uh, sorry i cloned this amplicon into a vector that's pgmt and uh, grown different colonies into uh, after growing it in bacteria um and uh, isolated plasmid and send the uh, individual clones um plasmids plasmids uh, for sequencing and uh, analyzed the sequence uh, via a normal alignment method um and i was happy that all of my five clones uh, i obtained a 77 base pairs deletion um say, uh, like meaning that the deletion was successful and um now the uh, the thing that we expect from this uh, deletion is that the formation of a maybe dominant truncated <coughs> protein of the receptor uh but we don't know how it will be whether it will be whether it will be truncated or uh, how it um uh, or how it will just stop the protein uh, formation will just stop so so this is what i have done till now and the future plans involve uh the um <coughs> growing a single cell clonal population uh their expansion uh and genotyping to study the confirmed deletion into the uh, of those cells um and then inject uh, after crowd preserving the cells uh, inject it into a female recipient host chicken uh, for transmission of the edited genome into the progeny um and then uh, after when i i will breed the these um uh, these chickens uh, to obtain a, a viable population of homozy homozygous and heterozygotes and this will be performed uh, uh, against the background of uh, uh, mac reported chickens and uh, once we obtain the offspring i'll perform the immune uh, phenotype related studies so yep yeah, that's it <laughs> thank you